Welcome to Haunted Talks, the official podcast of The Haunted Walk, offering ghost tours and paranormal adventures in Kingston, Ottawa, and Toronto, Ontario, and online experiences to anyone in this mortal realm. My name is Jim Dean. I am the creative director, and it is my privilege to be your haunted host for this episode. You're lounging in your living room, enjoying a good book on a gloomy night with a hot mug of tea or coffee by your side. All is quiet and peaceful. You're content, surrounded by your beloved furry friends. One minute, Fluffy is happily sleeping on the couch, dreaming the night away, a little purr emitting from their slightly opened mouth. The cat is peacefully drifting back to reality, opening their eyes bit by bit and coming to their senses. Then suddenly, they spot it. Something there. In the corner? You strain to see it? Maybe a bug? Her favorite toy? A shadow that you're inadvertently making with your hands? No. It doesn't appear to be any of those things. So you look back at Fluffy. They're fully engaged. Staring unflinchingly at that corner eyes getting wider and wider tail very subtly starting to wag back and forth as far as you can see there is nothing there fluffy you ask cautiously but their attention doesn't waver you pat them gently and they acknowledge you with a little flick of the tail a twitch of the ear but the stare continues. There is something there, but you can't see it. Before long, Spot, your ever-loyal canine companion, strides into the room. They stop, look at Fluffy, and following the gaze, a look overcomes them. Spot sees it too. Slightly annoyed, You get up out of your seat and go towards the corner, intent on finding the flick of dust or cobweb that has distracted them. But it's clear there is nothing to be found. Both Fluffy and Spot stare past you, as if looking right through you. Now thoroughly freaked out, you slowly retreat to the doorway of the room, unsure whether to call their names, run burn your house down, or call the Ghostbusters. Then, as suddenly as it all started, both Fluffy and Spot snap out of the trance. Fluffy jumps off the couch and intertwines amongst your legs, while Spot thumps down to their favorite sleeping spot, twirls around three times, and lays down with a huff. What on earth did they just see? If you're a pet owner, that story probably sounds somewhat familiar. I think most of us animal lovers have caught our furry friends staring at absolutely nothing, transfixed on some entity that we can't see, but somehow is clear to them as if it were standing right in front of them. Last year around this time, we adopted a 12-year-old blind cat. And we were curious, would we see the same type of phenomena play out with Arthur? And we have. Often when we're sitting, watching a movie, he will suddenly look up and stare, causing us to ask each other, did you hear something? Other pet owners, what it's like to have an animal that will jump up at some noise that you didn't hear, trot over to some spot in the room, and then intently stare, meow, bark, chirp, or make some commotion. Sometimes you find an explanation for the weird behavior 
It was a little bug after all, or the neighborhood cat strutting down the fence. But many times, you're left sitting there absolutely perplexed and a little unsettled. Are they really seeing something that we can't see? Or are they simply more sensitive to the little touches, noises, or changes in the environment? While many people believe, and have believed for centuries, that animals have a connection with the spirit world. In cultures all over the world, there are stories about animals bringing messages from beyond the grave, delivering omens, or appearing as gods themselves. But what about our pets? Those animals that we grow especially close to, that we bring into our homes. Some people think that since pets are closer to us, they actually have even stronger connections with the human spirit world and can communicate with ghostly entities. And oddly, as I was just recording that paragraph, a random dog started barking in the distance. Some have speculated that they may deliver messages on our behalf, having a conversation with apparitions that may be around us all the time. While we might not be able to tell you what Fluffy or Spot has to say to your resident ghost, we can explore some creepy stories about pets and the paranormal. But before we get to that, a very happy Friday the 13th to everyone. We hope you have a very lucky day. It is mid-October and Halloween night is starting to draw near. There is no better time to join us for a ghost tour or paranormal adventure in Kingston, Ottawa, or Toronto, Ontario. From our traditional city tours, the original haunted walks, to our unique locations, such as Black Creek Pioneer Village, Queen's University, and the old Ottawa jail, we have something for every taste. If you're more interested in making direct contact with the spirits, you can try our paranormal investigations with Phantoms of Yore in Eastern Ontario, or our Alone in the Dark experience at Toronto's Black Creek Pioneer Village. As a Haunted Talks listener, you can save 15% off your Ghost Tour tickets using the promo code Haunted Talks, all one word, Haunted Talks at checkout on our website, hauntedwalk.com. There you will find our entire menu of Halloween season offerings. We love Halloween, and we would love for you to join us. Also, we have extremely big news to share about a new site we will be partnering with towards the end of October. Now that announcement is scheduled for Friday the 13th at 4.30 p.m., so keep an eye on our social accounts. Of course, I'm going to give our Haunted Talks listeners the first clue as to what that site may be. And I can tell you, it is in Toronto. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, all at Haunted Walk. And please be sure to follow, rate, and review the show wherever you listen. We've had a couple really nice reviews come in recently, which have made our hearts extra spooky for the Halloween season. The most obvious place to start our story has to be with cats. And that's not just because we're big cat lovers here at Haunted Talks, but because cats are almost always paired with the paranormal and creepy happenings. I don't think there's much Friday the 13th lore about hamsters or budgies, but there are some famous cautions against cats. While some of those beliefs can be downright hateful or untrue, I don't think we can deny that there have been historical connections between cats and the spirit world. From witches befriending them, to grooming cats supposedly foretelling the arrival of guests, there are plenty of different beliefs. But let's go into some stories that are actually documented and explore this unique connection 
between cats and the paranormal. Cats are apparently foretellers of death, and for some, that is proof they are especially attuned with the spirit world. Some of you have probably heard the story of Oscar, a therapy cat from Rhode Island who had a tendency to sleep near patients who were about to pass away. Oscar worked at a nursing and rehabilitation center in Providence, deliberately brought in as a therapy cat. But it didn't take staff very long to notice that he tended to favor patients who were terminally ill. Normally aloof and uninterested in making new friends, Oscar would show up at someone's bedside hours before their death. He tended to curl up or go sleep nearby, sometimes snuggling in their lap. It became so common, and Oscar's predictions were so accurate, that staff took to calling family members of anyone he befriended, worried that a death was imminent. While some people have suggested it was the subtle smell of death that attracted the normally hermit-like cat, others have pointed out he was still selective in who he visited. In his first few months, Oscar had foretold the deaths of over 25 residents. After a few years on the job, that number had grown over 100. Oscar has become an icon of pop culture, and you can find versions of his story everywhere. But he's not the only cat who had the ability to predict death. A quick review of stories online reveals countless instances of family cats who have suddenly taken a liking to someone new, only to have them pass a short time later. In other instances, the cat sitting on your lap isn't so grim, though. Take Achilles, the cat who predicted the World Cup matches back in 2018 and had a better record than most analysts. Or the cat named Tom, who successfully warned people in China about a coming earthquake in 1975 and is credited with saving lives. Some people will liken these events to coincidence or some weird phenomena such as cat's intuition. But the connection between cats and the paranormal does make us wonder if something else could be going on. Take one of the most famous disasters in Canadian history, the sinking of the passenger ship the Empress of Ireland in 1914. Although the tragedy was more deadly than Titanic, the fates of the passengers traveling from Canada to Ireland is less well known than its famous counterpart. The ship had a scheduled stop in Quebec City on that fateful spring night. During that stop, the ship's chief mouser, who had just given birth to kittens, abruptly departed the ship, carrying off two of her young as she went. The crew, likely superstitious of leaving behind the ship's cat, searched far and wide, but nothing could persuade the animal to come back, and the Empress of Ireland departed without her. Only a couple of hours later, a devastating collision occurred in the St. Lawrence River, resulting in the deaths of over 1,000 passengers. Did the cat foresee the disaster and take steps to avoid going down with the ship? Or was it merely a coincidence that the animal exhibited such strange behavior, something we could liken to confirmation bias? You can decide. But it doesn't take long to find other stories of cats who mysteriously vanished from ships right before a disaster, likely leading to the superstition that probably drove the Empress's crew members to search for the animal before the ill-fated departure. A quick flip through historical accounts gives us countless stories of cats who supposedly saw ghosts. An article from the 1930s out of San Francisco reminds us that ancient cultures, especially the Egyptians, had made connections between cats and the spirit world centuries ago. Edgar Allan Poe famously played on this idea in his short stories and poetry 
where black cats appear connected to instances of death and omens. The same article recounts a story of a black cat that saw his owner murdered and then refused to go near the house again, arching its back in horror whenever it was in sight. So perhaps cats can see ghosts or communicate with spirits, but can they be spirits themselves? We've combed the archives to find two stories about ghost cats. Our first comes from Lincolnshire in the village of Gunthrop in central England. A newspaper article from 1964 recounts the story of a large, majestic white ghost cat that seems to haunt the road leading to West Stockwith. The ghost cat was known by the locals and people tended to avoid the animal if it was seen. It wasn't so much that it was a bad omen, but it wasn't particularly friendly. But one day, a visitor to the village who knew nothing about the strange apparition was walking along the road when a large white cat appeared in front of them. Eager to pet this lovely animal, the visitor bent down to stroke its gleaming coat. But the mysterious feline suddenly vanished before their eyes. This cat was part of local folklore and even made it into a collection of tales in 1933, where it was suggested that some mysterious paw prints in the snow supposedly marked where a body had once been laid. Contemporary sightings and knowledge of this ghost cat seem sparse, but who knows what local lore might still be out there. The other story that we found was reported on in 1922, having come from an account given by the Society for Cyclical Research. As told to the society, a young woman and her mother were seated at a dinner table when they suddenly noticed a long-haired cat on the floor. Both were surprised at the presence of the creature as they didn't own a cat and had never seen one like it in their neighborhood. They opened the door and shooed the visitor out, but it turned towards them and gave both women an unflinching stare that both would recall in vivid detail. Its green eyes were bright yet cold as its unrelenting gaze bore into them. The cat then turned down the steps and vanished into thin air. The next year, the young woman saw the same white cat again, this time with her sister present. The two shooed the cat out of the house and it repeated that same creepy action, staring with its bright green eyes. A look of melancholy taking over its face before it vanished. As I was recording this section, Arthur came over and wanted to share a few thoughts. So I decided to do an impromptu interview with him. What do you think of the podcast, Arthur? Are you enjoying it so far? Do you ever see ghosts? How many ghosts have you seen? That sounds like a lot. Cats were the obvious place to start our episode. But what about other pets? Have you looked over at your pet chameleon and wondered if it can predict the future? Or do you ponder if your ball of fur hamster can see the dead? Maybe your goldfish swims backwards when it sees a spirit in the room. Or perhaps your pet snake cowers in fear when it senses something unseen. But how about birds? Like cats, birds are often the subject of omens in many cultures. They feature in creation stories and legends involving gods, probably because the birds can reach high up into the sky, places where humans can't naturally go. The sudden absence of chirping birds is usually seen as foretelling of a major event or a local disturbance and has been used well in many horror films. Even the presence of some birds is considered a communication from beyond the grave. But what about those feathered friends that live in our homes? Do they have connections with the paranormal? There are anecdotal stories of pet birds that seem rather similar to that fluffy, 
and spot tail that I started this episode with. Birds, especially cockatiels, are known to stare into space and chirp at things unseen. In completely darkened rooms, birds can apparently pick up on changing energies and forces, similar to the way dogs and cats stare at empty corners when there's seemingly nothing there. This isn't surprising, as research on many birds, especially the types that we keep as pets, have proven they have remarkable eyesight and senses that are far more developed than we previously thought. If there is something unseen, it's likely that birds are just as adept to seeing it as other animals. However, pet birds have also been exposed as frauds, like some other paranormal gimmicks we've discussed on previous shows. Take Raja, the psychic bird that was trying to attract onlookers to a live show. This bird boldly and incorrectly predicted that Gerald Ford would defeat Jimmy Carter in the upcoming U.S. presidential election. When Carter was victorious, his owner, Colin Kerr, explained that it was a misinterpretation. The bird was correct, you see, it was Kerr who had gotten the message wrong. Ticket sales were apparently very slow, and as some extra incentive, Kerr promised the mysterious Raja would be free to fly around the audience. If Raja landed on someone and deposited droppings on them, they would be blessed with good fortune. It's unclear whether Kerr and Raja were able to gather any more support for their show, even with the promise of bird poop bearing good luck. Of course, we need to talk about dogs. While cats are usually the first pet that comes to mind when thinking about ghostly things, there is no shortage of tales about dogs and their connections to the paranormal. From seeing invisible entities, to predicting the future, to coming back from the grave to haunt their favorite places, Spot is just as much a player as Fluffy in our paranormal tales. These next ones are for all you dog owners who have always suspected that your furry friend is seeing something you're not. Or perhaps those of you who are quite sure there's a ghost dog haunting your house. That's exactly what Mrs. Parr, a resident of Calgary, claimed decades ago. She first saw the canine ghost one night when she was in her bathroom. She spotted the strange, short-haired gray dog trot into the room and then cower behind the door. Frightened and confused, she gently pushed the door back in an attempt to get the dog out. But it was already gone, having vanished into thin air. She called her own dog, a gray, long-haired sheepdog, who slowly walked from the opposite end of the house to inspect the bathroom. This same ghost dog was seen on numerous occasions over the next year, suddenly appearing in the sitting room while Mrs. Parr and her daughters were there, and also manifesting at night when their own dog was secured in another room. Mrs. Parr and her daughter frequently heard the sound of little paws on the floor moving from room to room when their dog was outside. Reports were quick to say that neither woman was superstitious or a great believer in ghosts, but they were quite convinced that a gray dog was visiting them from beyond the grave. If you're wondering what the resident dog thought about all this, it's not quite clear. Mrs. Parr recalled one incident when the ghost dog was in the same room as their own dog, and it attempted to attack the paranormal entity, only to have it vanish. The confused resident dog eventually settled down, perplexed over where the intruder had gone. But he didn't seem to mind when the ghost dog joined them for walks, as it frequently did, according to Mrs. Parr. She often heard the distinct sound of pawed steps as they went down the street, and even spotted the distinctive gray fur on occasion. The family was happy to host the ghost dog, as it didn't seem to cause any trouble. But its reasons for bothering that particular family, in that particular house, were unclear. 
It's unknown whatever happened to the Grey Dog on 14th Street West in Calgary, and if it still might be attached to the present family living on the property. While ghost dogs don't seem as common as ghost cats, our canine pals can apparently detect unseen entities just as well. Take this classic sounding story from Australia. A man was visiting a friend, enjoying some after dinner cigars in the library. The man's large German boarhound suddenly leaps up from where it was sleeping and begins barking at the corner of the room. Startled, the visitor asks what was happening, but the friend motioned for him to be quiet. The two watched as the dog, frantic in his barking and with almost blind fury in his eyes, was fixated on something the men couldn't see. The dog followed whatever this thing was as it appeared to move across the room and toward the window on the opposite side. The dog quieted down, but remained focused on the window for a few more minutes before eventually settling in. The owner explained that this was a near nightly occurrence and he was convinced that a ghost was visiting them. A ghost that only the dog could see. Despite his size and aggression in that moment, the dog was known to be quite gentle and not prone to fits of violence. According to both men, it was clear the dog was seeing something that the men could not, but neither knew exactly what that was. Although those two men didn't see what their dog was barking at, an owner of a different dog did claim to see the same apparition at the same time. The story was submitted decades ago to the Houston Society of Cyclical Research by an anonymous man who claimed to have this experience as a child. One day, he was descending the stairs with his loyal Newfoundlander, a big, lovable dog that was devoted to the young boy, as they often are. The two were about halfway down when suddenly the boy saw an apparition of his father right in front of him. The boy's dad had passed away about a month before, and of course this was very frightening to the child. It wasn't necessarily the presence of his dead father that made him run in terror, but the apparition appeared to be cut in two, with the black wall visible through the ghost. The child rushed down the stairs screaming, while the dog, who is normally protective and loyal, cowered in fear. It promptly put its tail between its legs, whimpered, and rushed downstairs to hide in the coal bin. It took a lot of coaxing to get the dog out of his hiding spot. The big Newfoundlander was petrified. No one had any explanation for this strange behavior, and the dog was known to defend the boy and even attack things that had frightened him. It was clear that the dog had also seen something that scared him. Was it the same apparition as the boy? Or was it something completely different? These anecdotal stories are cute, and we know that every dog is a good dog. But what about famous dogs? Have they ever had any run-ins with a ghost? Well, we are in luck. Apparently Rex, who was the first dog during the time of Ronald Reagan's presidency in the 1980s, was quite in tune with the many ghosts that are said to be haunting the White House. But according to his family, Rex had taken a particular interest in Abraham Lincoln's ghost, who is said to haunt the area around his former bedroom. When the story first broke in 1986, Nancy Reagan was a bit evasive. She confirmed that the dog did weird things around Lincoln's bedroom, like barking and staring, and said that her husband would remark about Abe's presence every time the dog acted out. But when asked if she or her husband then believed in ghosts, she turned the question back to the reporters. Apparently, the First Lady wasn't ready to go on record as a believer 
in ghosts. It turns out that Ronald Reagan was a bit more forthcoming about the story the following year, when the president gave a Lincoln birthday speech to a group of junior high students. In recalling the story to the students, Reagan said, Now, I haven't seen him myself, but every once in a while, our little dog, Rex, will start down that long hall toward the room, just glaring as if he's seeing something and barking. Then he stops in front of Lincoln's door. Reagan readily admitted that he would be happy to meet the ghost of Abraham Lincoln and would greatly welcome a conversation with him. It appears that while Rex may have spotted the old president wandering around the White House, Ronald Reagan never got his chance. If you would like to hear another eerie and heartwarming story about dogs and the paranormal, please check out episode 56, where we did a whole episode on silent movie star Rudolph Valentino's dog and their unique connection which carried on after Valentino's death. I'll put a link for it in the show notes. Next time you catch Fluffy or Spot staring at the corner of your living room, lost in their own world as they stare at something unseen, you can wonder, who are they looking at? Is it another animal that has now appeared as a ghost, living in your house, eating all the pet food that you accused yours of eating? Or maybe it's the ghost of someone famous, someone you've always wanted to meet, have a conversation with. Perhaps they're seeing a spirit who wants to communicate with you, and they're sending messages on your behalf. While the presence of the paranormal is not always clear, what is clear is that our pets seem to have the ability to see what we can't see, to sense what we can't sense, and to commune with something we just can't quite comprehend. Those little critters that we bring into our houses and our hearts for loyalty, quirkiness, and protection seem to be harboring a few secrets of their own. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. If your pet does anything weird or eerie, I think we'd all love to hear it. Please feel free to share your story on our Facebook and Instagram posts for this episode, both of which you can find us at Haunted Walk. We're also on TikTok as well with the same handle. For information about all of our exciting Halloween season adventures, please visit our website, hauntedwalk.com. As always, special thanks to our Haunted Talks team, including Brittany Buss, who researched and wrote this episode when not petting her cats, and to Michelle Dennis, our outstanding audio editor, when not sneaking cookies for Mr. Fancy Paws. Until we meet again, sweet dreams. Sweet dreams.